with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 finally here, we know many of you are ready to start your adventure in Ionios. So we thought we'd prepare a bunch of quick tips to help you on your journey. And don't worry, there won't be any story spoilers in this video. With that, let's get right into it. Take advantage of swapping characters. Seriously, if you're an experienced Xenoblade Chronicles player, you'll know that previously, it was a bit of a hassle to change your characters, especially in the middle of battle. But now you can do it at any point in time, and it's really handy. It's also incredibly helpful for tougher battles. Whether you're trying to set up combos, or your character falls in battle so you swap to someone else rather than waiting for a healer to come pick you up, or maybe you really like one class, and you swap to each character leveling up that class to keep playing it more and more. There's a lot of reasons anyone may want to swap characters, so be sure to make good use of that feature. Set targeting to classic. So in the options menu, you can change targeting in battle to classic, and enemies in battle, to make it feel better and generally stay focused on where you need it to be. You're far less likely to accidentally draw in even more enemies in your battles this way. Seriously, this was a helpful option as for the first few hours of the game, I didn't change this setting, and it was hard to keep focus on the enemies already in battle, as I kept accidentally targeting surrounding enemies nearby, only drawing more of them in. In fact, check out the options menu as soon as you boot up the game. There's a lot of helpful toggles here, such as the targeting, but also others, like enabling overkills and chain attacks. Some options won't appear until later in the game, so make sure to check over time as more features get unlocked. Do the training drills. Seriously, these are really helpful to learn some of the core battle systems. If you're an experienced player, you may not find yourself needing these, but especially if you haven't played the game in a little while and you're just coming back to it, this can be essential to making sure you understand the systems. And if you're a brand new player, it might just give you exactly what you need to know to do your best in battles. Raise your Ouroboros interlink level. Rather than just interlinking into your Ouroboros form at the start of battle or whenever you want to, focus on raising this level first. And you'll do that by using fusion arts from both participating members in the interlink. There's a whole training drill about this one, and it's really helpful to do. But to give a quick rundown, using fusion arts will contribute to raising the interlink level. And you can even use tactics to set your allies to also focus on using fusion arts. And this will raise the interlink level even faster. In the options menu, there's an option you can set to control any of your party interlinking, rather than only have you control of your currently controlled character, or the AI interlinking on their own. Depending on which way you would prefer, it's important to check this setting, as if you want full control of when your party interlinks and who interlinks, you'll definitely want to mess with this setting. Always seek out question marks on your map. These are quest-related events and many times they'll actually lead to hero quests, so you'll definitely want to find these. Sometimes, sure, they're just normal side quests, but it is always good to make sure you find these on the map and fill them out. On a related note to quests, do quests as they show up. Trying to keep up with quests as you obtain them keeps them from overwhelming you later on. Trust me, there's a lot of side quests and hero and side story quests. It can get overwhelming if you let them stack up. And they show the recommended levels, which are usually around what you should be when obtaining it. But sometimes they will be even higher level than you. So if you decide to tackle it early, be warned of a potential challenge. Don't always train at the camps, despite what Lance and Senna may say otherwise. Seriously, you might get too overleveled too quickly, which is not inherently a bad thing, but you shouldn't build a reliance on this. This is obviously all up to the player, but at my own personal recommendation, set a balance for yourself to train bonus levels when you feel you need it, rather than defaulting to always going higher. So if you reach a difficult story boss that maybe you're equal in level to, but it's just giving you too much trouble, then maybe see about giving your entire party another level or two and see if that helps you out. But I wouldn't say to default to immediately giving all the bonus levels that you can get all the time as you'll quickly be overleveled for the main story. Never adventure on an empty stomach. Always make use of eating meals. 
whether it's at colony canteens or Mananda's cooking at campsites. These always give a helpful bonus boost, like to EXP, gold, class points, and more. So whenever a meal effect runs out, you should definitely go make sure your party eats some more. Set your shortcuts as you see fit. Pressing the ZL button brings up the quick menu. In this quick menu, you can assign shortcuts to various other menus and options here by using the A, B, Y, and X buttons. Keeping the quest route is very helpful to be able to quickly toggle on and off. But beyond that, you can press the plus button to change the shortcuts, and you can go with whatever you're more likely to quickly boot up. Characters can be good to quickly change classes, arts, and more, and quests can be good to quickly look through your available quests and change which one is active. There's a lot of options here, and you're highly encouraged to customize it to your liking. Check your hero roster. This is found in the settings menu. Now, I won't show the full menu here for spoiler reasons, but some very helpful info can be found here, including a breakdown of each hero's class, weapons, strengths, and weaknesses, all of their skills and arts, their chain attack bonus, their voice actor, some voice clips, and even their illustration and more. So why is this here in the tips video? Well, because of the Ascension quest condition. In Zeon's case here, you must complete the quest for Colony 9. Ascension quests are what allow classes to uncap from rank 10 and reach max rank 20. As you progress through the game, these will change from three question marks to then indicate how to unlock the Ascension quest. So definitely make sure to check out this menu from time to time, as you won't really get an indicator when it updates. And there you have it, a bunch of quick tips for your adventure through Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Hopefully, they'll help you on your journey across Ionios. And if you want more tips, honestly, make sure to check through that handy tips menu through the game that will constantly get updated as you go through. But what do you guys think? Come up with any helpful tips that we didn't mention here? Let us know down below, and be sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for plenty more on Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and other things gaming as well. Until next time. Farewell, everyone.